Plenty of changes are happening in the food industry. For that, we are turning to Darren Tristano. He's president of Technomic. Good to have you back on the show. Good to be here. So let's talk about Grubhub and these third-party delivery services, and there's so many out there now. Absolutely, and, and Grubhub is just one example. You have Uber who's jumped into the game. You've got a number of players that are looking at being able to bring convenience to especially millennial consumers, those that are willing to pay for it, by going to the restaurant, picking it up, and bringing it to wherever they're at with a fee attached to it. Now what we find interesting in our research is that fast food is one of the areas. It's very craveable, already very convenient with drive throughs but fast food is one of the things that's inexpensive enough to be able to afford the delivery cost, but going and getting a Whopper from Burger King has now become having someone picking it up and bringing it to wherever you are. I can't even imagine that, but it's happening. And are millennials the driver on this? I think millennials are not only the driver for the trend, but they're probably the driver for the delivery as well. So I think what mm -hmm. we see here is the willingness to pay and the high value that very entitled millennials have put on the time that they have. So instead of going out to a restaurant, parking, going in, picking it up, bringing it home, in most cases where they may eat it, they're just using the delivery service. So the technology is available to get it done, they're willing to pay, and they're willing to do it every day. While there are winners, if people are going into that business, there are always some losers. I would think maybe servers would get hurt by this because if people aren't coming into the restaurant and tipping, there could be a little bit of an issue. Are there any downsides that you can see? Well, I think overall this is going to take a lot of the food that is typically purchased for dine-in and move it off premise, uh, not unlike catering. So moving that outside of a full service restaurant is going to make it a little bit harder for a server to make that tip money. And certainly minimum wage is a whole other subject. Whole so other subject. That can get us closer to helping these servers to continue to earn a living. Interesting. Are you seeing changes in trends happening because of the minimum wage issue? We're hearing more that it's causing companies to go to technology such as tablets versus having a server actually come to the table. Big mistake leveraging technology to replace servers. What we often find is the best examples of using technology or enabling technology at a restaurant is to enhance the experience. So to make it better for the customer. So the customer who wants to order with a kiosk or a mobile phone, give them that chance. But for the rest of us who want a server that they're interacting with, give them that as well. So for, for many restaurants, it's about slowly moving, meeting expectations, and doing it in a way that isn't cost savings, but more enhancing the overall experience and the enjoyment that the customer has when they're at your restaurant. I agree with you. I like it when I go to the grocery store and there's somebody checking me out. I, I even like the gas station guys that used to come and fill you up. Right. Let's talk about some other trends. One last trend you wanted to mention. So you're a full service girl. Uh, you know, <laughs> why not? And somebody gets a job. Why not? Perfect. Well, another trend that we're seeing is full service restaurants have really struggled. Mm. Um, part of it is that they're not expanding very often. So so we don't see a lot of new restaurants. And the other part is these big chains, they've gotten to a point where customers don't know why they're going. They're going to eat, but they don't have a reason to go there. So the, the different chains that have done very well tend to be sports bars that have a great adult beverage focus mm -hmm. and have an experience factor, especially for younger consumers who like to go out and see on big screen sporting events. And the other one is steakhouses. Steakhouses have a great wine program that tends to help. Far more wines than you're going to have at home at most homes. But steakhouses have really been upscaled and those two seem to be doing very well today. The other is the small regional chains. So brands that grow in small markets, Cooper's Hawk for example, which also has oh, a great, great wine restaurant, program, growing very quickly, um, regionally, really teaching customers that you come here for great wine, great service, great experience, and great food. Thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.